Hello and welcome back here. I hope that you're well, I hope that you're safe and I hope that you're in good spirits. It's a beautifully sunny day here in the mountains. It's really welcome after quite a few weeks of grey and cloud and rain and cold. Um, and it's actually the first day of spring. We had the spring equinox yesterday which we celebrated as a family by going for a foraging walk, um, collecting wild garlic and also nettles which we turned into soup and that was a really lovely way to welcome the turn of the seasons. It wasn't the sunniest of days yesterday but we were outside all day long gathering flowers and um, playing with our friends as well so it was a really lovely day.
I thought it would be nice for you to join me for a cup of tea at the start of this new week um, and the start of this new season and I wanted to share with you a few things that I've been doing. So I've been very busy since we last met. Um, I've been doing mainly a lot of spinning. Um, I've just felt a need every evening to go and sit at my wheel and that's been a really pleasant and therapeutic activity for me. Um, in February when I wasn't feeling too well um, and my spirits were a bit low um, and then later when I think things began um, in elsewhere and uh, yeah so I've been spinning a lot and really getting a lot of pleasure from that. When I said I've been spinning lots, I wasn't joking. I've spun all this since we last met. Um, so various different projects with various different fibres, um, all British wool actually at the moment. Um, Suffolk and Cheviot, Black Welsh Mountain, Cheviot. Jacob, there's some more Jacob there from Top, and that's from Carded Prep. Um, Masham and Blue Face, Blue Face Lester. So I've been doing two things in the last um, couple of months with my spinning. I've been working on my worsted draw technique and I feel now like I'm really getting to the stage where I really know what I'm doing it's becoming much more natural and I, I actually really like it so that's been the first thing I've been experimenting with different breed specific wool so I'm just continuing my little exploration of different sheep breeds that I had already in my stash um, if you remember I've had for a couple of years now, um, a quantity of um, different 100 gram tops of different sheep breeds from Britain. Um, all the wool either came from William Woolworks, um, John Arbin Textiles or World of Wool. And I've also been experimenting with ply. had spun some Wesson fleece, so from carded prep. So I ended up with about 300 grams of two ply DK weight wool and I was intending to make socks from this and at the last minute when I was about to cast on I decided that actually I didn't want to cast on a pair of socks with 
a woolen spun yarn um, because probably because a pair of socks I had knit at the start of the year from commercial yarn had just started showing signs of wear after two months of intensive wearing. So I think I got a little bit worried that my beautifully spun socks would very quickly um, wear out. So I decided to go back to worsted drawer. So worsted drawer with comb top and I also decided to play with ply. I have only previously spun once um, a three ply yarn and that was right at the start of my spinning career, um, three years, uh, seven years ago and I felt a need to go back to it. So um, I found a little sample um, of about 20 grams of fiber and I spun up three bobbins full and then plied them and I ended up with the first sample yarn. And when this came off my wheel first as the finished yarn, and then I spun, and then I knitted up the swatch. I was just overjoyed with how the yarn turned out. I've never spun something so fine and so neat and consistent. So I went into my fibre stash and I found a beautiful soft grey, um, almost brownish grey Suffolk top home to top of 100 grams and I decided to pair that with some cheviot because I was worried I wouldn't quite have enough um, with a 100 grams um, amount. So I spun up two bobbins of the grey and one bobbin of the white. Again did a little sample and this is the knitted up swatch and when this came off my wheel I was just over the moon. As I said I've never knitted something so I've never spun anything so fine and so consistent and having previously thought I really didn't like three ply yarn I think I've fallen in love with it. So I then spent a good couple of weeks spinning up my three bobbins full and I ended up with this beautiful skein of 150 grams of yarn. So that went really, really well. And as I had uh, 50 grams left over, I decided to get my dye pots out again and to experiment with a little bit of natural dyeing because I don't know, I love bead specific greys, natural sheepy colored greys, whites, browns, blacks. But I just probably because winter was dragging on a little bit, I found myself hankering for a bit of color and I just thought it would be fun to have a go. I haven't done any natural dyeing for a couple of years and even then I've not really done, I've not really had the opportunity to practice very much. Um, and yeah, so I ended up with a beautiful, I used onion skins and I ended up with a beautiful golden colour which I then also spun into three plies which I then plied together and I ended up with this beautiful, absolutely beautiful, golden, glowing little skein, which the intention is to use that for contrast. So from there I then came up with a plan for a pair of hand spun naturally dyed socks. I've really fallen in love with the latest pattern, sock pattern by Melody of Mandarins um, and I thought it would be lovely to pair this golden yellow with a very dark natural brown, almost black, black Welsh mountain. 
so again I already had some top I had ordered some top in between um, because I had just run out of something for another project so I ordered some uh, wool from Wingham Wool Works which my mum kindly sent me over in the post and yeah so I started my project and then eventually after a couple of weeks I ended up with this so this is my lovely Black Welsh Mountain, which I have not yet um, blocked. I have a number of yarns that I need to block, so it's still got quite a lot of twist um, energy in the in the in the yarn. So it's a finished three ply, and it's a fingering weight. So the intention is to knit up these two together. And when my son saw them, he said, oh, Mama, you should make some bumblebee socks. Um, so yeah, I, if I don't end up making Melody's pattern, then I may make some bumblebee socks because I agree with him. I think that would be really fun. But I just love the way the black and the gold pair together. Having done so much spinning since the start of the new year, I finally decided it was time to sit down and make myself a spinning journal. So one quiet Sunday afternoon, I rummaged around in my bookcases, pulled out an old unused bullet journal I've had for a couple of years, lit a candle, made some coffee, and sat down with my ruler and pen and started filling in the blank pages. I quite like it, although uh, as each new entry goes into the journal, I'm adding my own things, or taking away other things to make sure that the journal really suits me and reflects my needs.
So the final thing that I want to share is that uh, I would like to set up self-employed again and I would like to create an activity um, around my wool work um, and my bear making. So you may have spotted I've got a little friend on the table with me. This is my little bear Albert who I made for my 30th birthday. He comes with me nearly everywhere and he's a dear little friend. I'm going to, I could set up right now if I wanted to, but I've been advised to actually wait until a little bit later in the year because it's very possible I may be able to receive a grant to help me with the cost of setting up um, because of my status as a disabled person. If you don't know, I have two chronic illnesses. I have suffered from ME CFS since the age of 12, so over 20 years, and I also have bipolar disorder. So yeah, I feel it would be sensible to at least apply for the grant. Um, it's going to take a couple of months, so I won't be able to be officially registered until I have news of the grant. Um, the way the rules work are that you can't uh, register and then make the application. I feel it would be sensible in view of the fact I have to wait for news of the grant and in view of the fact my daughter won't start school until September just to wait and spend the next six months slowly getting things put in place, getting things ready. Um, so I'm really excited to tell you that come September I will officially be self-employed again, fingers crossed. Um, I will be able therefore to start selling items again. So, um, what I thought could be interesting is to um, document the process over the next few months of me setting up, take you with me when I do any other training or when I have to go to meetings, um, show you the behind the scenes of me starting to make my products and to design things. Um, again, I think it's quite sensible that I've got some time to just slowly get a first collection of items ready for sale. I've got to work on my website, um, I'd like to reactivate my blog again, um, I'd like to work on a newsletter, and then I've also got some just very unpoetic, boring, administrative things to do, like organise um, professional insurance, inform the housing association that I'll be self-employed, um, and yeah, just setting up my workroom, possibly attending some sewing courses, all variety of things to do. So yeah, I would like to share that here. Um, the final thing I want to say, <laughs> if you follow me on Instagram, you've probably noticed in the last fortnight I keep changing name and I'm going from one thing to the other and it's all a bit of a, of a blur. I feel very clear now what I want to focus my energies on in terms of my professional activity and that will be mohair bear making. Um, I am very aware this time round, the second time, that this is no longer a hobby, this is now going to be a professional activity and as such I need to change my, my, uh, my hat and think of myself as a business owner, which is a bit strange <laughs> because it's a business of one, but yeah, that's something I've got to do. Um, and yeah, I need to start thinking very seriously about where I put my energy and how I do things etc. And the other thing I need to think about is who I will be focusing on, whether I try to focus on a local, um, who my audience is, whether it's going to remain more of an international um, focus or whether I'm also going to try and um, and establish a local audience for my work as well so that's just to explain why if 
at the moment I'm well and hearted but it changes to something else it has a French name that's why I may keep the French name as a separate thing for a different branch of my activity I'm not entirely sure I will be sharing that process with you here um, I feel quite strongly that yes it's important that I am professional and that I um, approach this from a professional way as I said this is no longer going to be in the domain of hobby it's going to be in the domain of professional so that's why I would like to really focus on my teddy bears I would love to use elements of natural dyeing of knitting crochet spinning in my work as a mohair bear artist really trying to take up the name artist um, it feels quite strange but I'm gonna try and practice that word but I would really like to keep also knitting spinning particularly for myself I would like to retain a hobby element um, which is why I won't be selling this yarn for example um, I may in the future I would love to teach spinning teach workshops um, etc in person or online but I don't think I'll be selling my hand spun um, yarn for example unless I incorporate some of it into a bear project um, quite simply because I feel it's important for me as a creative business owner to retain something for myself, a hobby aspect, because it's really important for my creativity. Um, and of course there will be crossover, and what I love about bear making is that it brings so many different elements in. Um, but yeah, it's going to be, um, it's going to be a bit separate. But I would love to bring you into my studio. Um, I would love to show you different aspects of my making. And then when in September I am officially set up, I will be reopening my Patreon. Um, and I would love there to create a community around my bear making, a community of sharing my um, day to day a little in a little bit more detail, sort of more behind the scenes than I'll be showing here. And also have an element of teaching the craft and the art of bear making so I'll talk to you more about that in the future but it's just to explain um, where I am right now at the start of spring at the end of March um, I sort of had projected that I would hopefully be at this place um, when the year started and I'm just really excited to feel a little bit more um, like I know now what I would like to do and how I'm going to manage it with my health um, and yeah I'm just really excited to bring you along on this journey so from time to time you'll see studio vlogs popping up where I'll be talking specifically about my bears about different aspects of making there may be tutorials from time to time and hopefully every now and again I'll also film a more kind of podcast um, where I'll just show you what I've been making in my spare time so um, yeah I think I'll finish that here now for now thank you so much for being here thank you so much for your continued support um, for now, if you want to follow me elsewhere, I'm still known as Will and Hearted, so I'm Will and Hearted on Instagram. I have a website which I am working on right now, bringing it back to life, so that's willandhearted.com. And on the website, you'll see there's a little tab where you can click on, and it's for a newsletter. And I will also, in the next couple of weeks, be sending out a spring newsletter all about the direction that my work will be taking from now on. So thank you for joining me and I really look forward to seeing you again very, very soon. Take care. Bye bye.